Welcome to another episode of All About Code, the show for Xbase++ Clipper and Visual Fox Pro developers. My name is Nina, and today's episode is about testing. If you are watching this video, it means that you have already asked yourself this question and may have found an answer. If not, I can help you answer the question and perform an educated decision whether to test your products in the future or not. Also, I'll show you how you can benefit from testing. Let's go! People make mistakes. Always. But people can find mistakes. Hmm. Unfortunately, not always. In a study that became a classic, Lenford Myers had a group of experienced programmers testing a program with 15 known defects. The average programmer found only 5 from 15. The best found only 9. The main source of undetected errors was the erroneous output that was not examined carefully enough. The errors were visible, but the programmers didn't notice them. The conclusion is, humans are bad testers. Have you ever wondered how many errors should you expect it to find in one application? I'll show you on the next slide. The average number of errors is about 1 to 25 errors per 1000 lines of code. At first the number sounds a little bit abstract, but we should understand the number as unfulfilled or incorrectly implemented requirements. I hope it's a little bit clear now. The next question is, how can I check that requirements or expectations are fulfilled? Exactly, developer testing. I write tests to prove that my code works perfectly and implement all requirements correctly. In doing so, I can reduce the number of defects in my application. Actually, tests are requirements written in a machine language, like a specification that represents requirements written in a human language. That's why tests are helpful to understand how an application works. You don't need to read the uh, specification. You just look at the test and you can understand right away what the business logic is, how the components uh, should communicate with each other and so on. On the next slide, I would like to show you the distribution of errors per life cycle phase. In the diagram, we can see that in small projects, about 10% errors are introduced in the requirements phase. In the architecture phase, 15%. And in the implementation phase, about 75%. Implementation error account for 45 to 75% of all errors on even the largest project. This is what we can see uh, in the diagram. Next, I would like to discuss the average cost of error fixing. It's an interesting topic. In the table, the first column uh, contains software life cycle phases into which errors can be introduced. In the second column, the largest one, uh, the column shows the software life cycle phases in which error can be covered up. As we all know, a software life cycle uh, consists of several phases, which I would like to explain right now. The first phase is requirements. In this phase, all requirements are collected by analysts or developers. A specification will be created as a result. The second phase is architecture. In this, as the name says, in this phase, an architecture is developed by architects or developers. The architecture will be created on the basis of the requirements for the first phase. In the next phase, implementation, the requirements will be implemented by developers. Uh, this phase results in the creation of an application that meets all requirements from the first phase or specification. The next phase is system test. In this phase, the application is tested. The tested in its final configuration, including integration with other uh, software and hardware systems. 
It's been tested for security, performance, resources loss, timing problems and other issues that can't be tested at the lower level of integration. The fifth phase is called post phase, post release phase. This is the phase after the release in which users can uh, use the application. And the numbers in the table are average cost factors uh, when fixing an error. Based on the numbers, you can see that an error that occurs during the implementation phase and costs, for example, $1,000 to fix, can cost $25,000 after the release. You can see it in the table in the bottom. As we see, $1,000 turns to $25,000. If we had found the error in the implementation phase, it could have saved us $24,000. So, tests save money. On this diagram, I have illustrated the same data, but in uh, 3D format. In this way, you can imagine the dimension better. You see, the longer an error stays in software, the more damage or costs can be occurred. The rule of thumb is to find an error as close as possible to the time at which it was introduced. As you see, the last phase, uh, the post-release phase, causes maximum amount of cost. And the next slide, slide helps us find the reason out. I created a BBM and diagram showing the necessary actions uh, to fix a defect in an in-house developed application after the release. The upper area contains action of a customer. In the bottom area, we can see actions of a company that has an in-house developed application being used by its customers. When I describe the diagram, I'll start at the top left corner and follow the arrows. Let's go. The customer finds a small technical defect and reports it to the customer support. The support enters the error in the ticket system and sends the message to the developers. The developers analyze the error, fix and test manually. The error fixing takes 30 minutes, just 30 minutes. Then a build for the test environment is created and deployed only then the developers send the message to the testers. The testers test the application and check whether the defect has been fixed or not. Next, they send the message to the management. The management approves the release of the defect correction for the production environment. The developers create a build for the production environment and deploy it. The support closes the defect and informs the customer that the defect has been corrected. What I have just described is a business process for error fixing in an in-house developed application. But if we take a company that offers uh, vertical solutions, the whole business process gets compl more complicated. The complexity arises because the company has to carry out this process for several customers. On the next slide, I would like to show you the optimistic time evaluation of the post-release defect fixing, which we have just seen on this slide. You see the table. The first column shows the actions we saw in the previous diagram. The second column contains the actors. The third and fourth columns have duration times of the action from the first column. The data in the last two columns differ in that they represent duration times of a defect fixing in an in-house developed application and in a vertical solution. In the bottom you can see the total time for the in-house uh, software is 3 hours 45 minutes. For the vertical solution, almost infinite. The difference arises because some actions of defect fixing in the vertical solution take longer. I would like to explain it to you. We assume 
that our software company that offers vertical solutions has end customers using its vertical application. For M customers from N, the vertical application was installed with customized code. It means there are M different variants of the vertical application, which have to be maintained too. So the uh, first action is enter the defect in the ticket system. Here we have to multiply 15, 15 minutes by a number from 1 to n customers. As you know, customers are not so good in describing issues. Therefore, the same issue can be uh, described differently and entered in the ticket system several times. This means more time for defect fixing. The second, uh, the, second, uh, the second action is analyze the defect. It's often very difficult to analyze a defect uh, when it happens on an external system and cannot be reproduced locally. This again requires a considerable amount of time. The next interesting actions are create a build for the test environment and deploy the build to the test environment. At this point, it's about M customized variants of the vertical solution. I multiply here 10 plus 10 minutes by M installed customized variants. You see, we need more time again for defect fixing. The next action is test the changes. Because of M customized variants of the vertical application, testers have a huge amount of work and have to test all variants. This action increases the time too. But the good news is if you have automated testing, the action requir requir requires less time. The next action is approve the release for the production environment by the management. As you know, there can be different factors that can slow down the execution of this action. For example, for political or time reasons, the release decision cannot be made quickly uh, at some customers. The defect stays in application and the end users should wait. This means more time again for defect fixing. The next action is... The next uh, actions are create a build for a production environment and deploy the build to the production environment. The software company must create a build for each customized variant and deploy it. I multiply here 10 plus 10 minutes by M installed customized variants. More time again. And as a result, we have the higher duration times of defect fixing in the vertical solutions than in the in-house application. And in my evaluation, I didn't, uh, I didn't take into account any absences or latencies in the communication between the actors. In reality, we have to expect larger numbers. Instead of 3 hours, 45 minutes, maybe one couple of days, instead of almost infinite, it may be a couple of months. And let me remind you, all this time just because of a small technical defect that takes 30 minutes to fix. That's why a defect fixing in the post-release phase causes the maximum amount of costs. If the application had been carefully tested, the error would have been found and fixed before the post-release phase. Tests save money and time. The next topic. In this episode, I would like to address another topic, the topic existing code. Usually an application is developed and maintained by developers, but you know that any code modification can lead to errors. Not only in the change part, but also in other program parts that depends on the change part. The risk of error increases with each modification. The, this gives rise to fear of changes and hampers innovation. If an application is not being developed and maintained, it means there is no future for this application. 
for example, legislative requirements or suggestions from customers. If we don't make this change in the application, it will no longer be used. It means soon death. That's exactly what we don't want. We want our application to last as long as possible. So what can we do? We can test our software and thus remain on the safe side. On this slide I collected some opinions against testing, which I heard from other uh, developers. The first one is, I write no tests because I make no errors. That's impossible! Nobody is perfect! But as a self-fulfilling prophecy it might work. Mm, honestly, I don't believe in it. The fact says that there is no one that makes no mistake. So, the second opinion is, I write no tests because I have no time or money for it. It could be, but ears don't disappear because of it. Later, you will be first to invest time and money in ear fixing, and unfortunately much more. That is what we have learned today. Ear fixing in the post-release phase causes more costs than ear fixing in the implementation phase. And the third opinion, my favorite one. Um, I write no tests because it's boring. I have heard this before. Then I have a question for such developers. Have you made the right career choice? I thought the goal of good developers is writing a high quality software because they want to code and not to spend their time by defect fixing. And summary. I have been talking about testing the whole time. Now is a good time to define this term. Testing is a process of verifying an application with the purpose of identifying any errors, gaps or missing requirements versus the actual requirements. During testing, an application is used incorrectly in order to uncover hidden issues and used correctly to prove that all requirements are met. There is manual and automated testing. Manual testing is a type of software testing where testers manually execute prepared test cases without using any uh, automation tools. Also, a tester performs the comparison of test outcomes with predicted outcomes. Automated testing is a type of software testing where tests written in a programming language are executed by automation tools. Test outcomes and predicted outcomes are compared by automation tools too. So testing is about software quality. The general principle, it's cheaper to create a high quality software application than to develop uh, and fix a low quality application permanently. The highest software quality and productivity are achieved through automated tests. In the episode, we have learned that testing saves time, money, increase productivity and give confidence in your future. I hope you enjoyed this episode, which gave you food for thoughts regarding testing. My goal today was to give you all the information required to perform an educated decision whether to test your products in the future or not. Next time I would like to tell you what kind of testing and testing concepts there are. Have a nice day and see you next time! Bye!